So this is St. Basil the Great on baptism of particular heretics in his day. So there's a canon here. This is from, of course, his lifetimes. So we're talking about the fourth century, probably in the 360s, 370s, not long before his repose, I'm guessing. He's answering, I believe, Amphilokios, who was the bishop uh, and a fellow bishop in Asia Minor. Uh, so he says uh, about the practice of reception of converts, right? Exception of heretics, really. So this is a time period also that you might have had Orthodox who went over to heresy and then are coming back, right? So this is not a time period where you you got hundreds of years that have passed since the heresy erupted, like in with papalism and uh, Protestantism. But you have those who might have been Orthodox and coming back. Uh, so it's not always it's not always equal, right? If somebody's Orthodox and baptized and they become an apostate, they're not received by baptism; they're received by chrismation. So that might be playing in this. But there's also those who are actually heretics and they were born there and they lived there and they're coming over to the Orthodox faith. And how do we deal with them? So there are various groups of heresies that existed, obviously, in Asia Minor and other places. And they're coming sometimes back to the church. How do we receive them? That's the question. Encradite sacofors and apotactite. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly because it's in English, but... Uh, you know, reading the Greek is actually easier sometimes. All come under the same rule as the Novatians. And these are all schismatics. The Novatians were actually schismatics, but they you could say they had an ecclesiological heresy, possibly, in the sense that they were every schismat, schism is a potential, you know, eventually falls into heresy uh, over time. Uh, but their stance in regard to the church. Uh, so it says they come under the same rule. For a canon was promulgated concerning the latter, the novations, although it varies from place to place, whereas nothing specific has been said regarding the former. But he said they're in the same category. So the, he's going on the, on, uh, on the basis of that canon for the novations. Maybe it's applicable to these others who have yet been dealt with, right? And so this is, again, soteriology is always at the forefront, right? They're not legalists. They're not religious. It's not, it's not a religion here. We have a essentially a doctor dealing with the sick and how do we heal them, right? So it's very important to understand always the sociological context of everything the fathers are doing because then you, you otherwise you can really misunderstand their spirit and their and their mindset. So he says, even though, be that as it may that they're in the same category with the Novatians, who were schismatics, right? And they would have been received probably by economy in some places, or words received by economy in some places. He says, be that as it may, we simply rebaptize such persons. Now, it's very interesting to use the term rebaptize. And I should have the Greek here if, I'm, if I was going to be more specific. I would have the Greek and we could talk about some of the... It's what's interesting here, be that as it may, we simply rebaptize such persons. Now, why is that important? Because he wouldn't have said rebaptized if they were never baptized. Okay. Well, what does he mean? Well, they were baptizing as the Orthodox. That's what's important. They we don't have any reason to believe that they were not baptizing as the Orthodox because when they weren't baptizing as the Orthodox, in other words, baptizing, because that's what that means, immersing. What do we have? We have the Eunomians in Canon 7 and the Second Union Council, same time as St. Basil, and they specifically say that they were only immersing once into the death of Christ. That's what that means. So that when, when there's a departure from the form, it's noted because it means they must be baptized. That's the interpretation of the saints in this regard. And so the fact that he says rebaptized means that he, even though they were doing the form correctly, they were actually baptizing. That's the physical, like, Immersion, that's what the word means, doesn't matter, he says. Now, this should be shocking to the ears of all of those of, of friends of ours because they should say, whoa, 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 that's impossible because the Augustinian view of things is if they keep the form, and of course that even changed over time because they didn't even care over time that they were they were mercying or not. That became secondary and it's not important and you can pour and you can sprinkle and doesn't matter. But it, it, it certainly would be the case in the in the in the Augustinian Western scholastic idea that if they keep the form, you must not repeat. You must not repeat. Well, the same thing as it doesn't matter. 
we're going to do it. And then that's really important. Why does St. Basil say that? Because clearly the presuppositions here are that there are no mysteries outside the church. So whether the form is kept or not is important with regard to whether we can economize or not, but it doesn't force us to do anything. It doesn't force us not to The repetition of the form is in our hands, whether we do it or not. That's what St. Basil is saying, right? He goes on, he says, if among yourselves the measure of rebaptizing is banned, all right, because don't repeat the form. Remember, so that's exactly what he's saying. Well, if over there, as it more surely is among the Romans for the sake of some economy, so he's interpreting the Augustinian or the Western view of things. Wouldn't have been Augustinian at the time. Obviously, it was before Augustine started writing in earnest. But the view over there among those in, in North, America, North Africa or, or in Rome as economy, which they don't, they, don't, they don't talk about economy in the West ever. Uh, so, But he says, look, if it's some kind of thing over there in certain parts, like in Rome, where they have some economy and they, they refuse to do the form again, rebaptize, nevertheless, let what we say prevail. He says, even if that's the case there, don't listen to them. Do what I'm telling you. <laughs> this is St. Basil who's supposed, why am I bringing this up? Because wants to put St. Basil in their category, in their side of things. They want to steal St. Basil away from the, you know, traditional Orthodox perspective and put it into this uh, post-schism scholastic view that they have. And it's just not true. Right here in 47, it's obvious. It's clear that he has nothing. He has no vision like Augustine. It's not Augustinian, and it's certainly not Aquinan, and there's nothing in common because he says, not only can we, I want you to do it. I want you to ignore what they're doing in Rome, ignore that they don't want to repeat the form, and repeat the form because that's what's necessary for salvation in this case with these heretics. So there's no problem with the Orthodox taking a heter heretic, a her heterodox, who's even been immersed three times, if it's for the salvation and necessary, and say, doesn't matter, we're going to immerse you three times, because that's what's necessary. There's nothing there that says we must not repeat the form. And that's unfortunately what these neo-scholastics are pushing uh, this issue in today's church are doing. They're saying you cannot repeat the form. Nonsense. St. Basil says right here, do it. Do it. And even if the others don't do it, do it. And he goes on. For their heresy is something of an offshoot of the Marcionites who abominate marriage and disdain wine and say that God's creation is, de is, de is defiled. Now, did you hear anything Trinitarian in that? Did you, any, did you hear like confusion of Trinitarian theology? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody hear any Trinitarian heresy there? No. You didn't hear any Trinitarian heresy, did you? Because there was none. There was none. And that's very important. Because another theory among the neo-scholastics is, depending on the degree of heretical thinking, that's why the church does economy or doesn't do economy. In other words, receives by confession of faith or receives by chrismation and not by baptism. Well, in this case, he's talking about heretics that did not apparently have any Trinitarian error, at least not commemorated by St. Basil, not would have been an important point to commemorate, certainly. He doesn't say anything about any Trinitarian heresy, and he says, still, they need to be baptized. So that's another myth. The fathers did not look at the question of whether to baptize or not, in other words, to allow economy or not, because of the degree of the heretical teachings, because after all, they allowed for the economy in the fourth century for Arians. And there's nothing worse than an Arian because he denies the divinity of Christ. And that's that our salvation's done if there's no divine humanity. So he goes on. Therefore, we do not receive them into the church unless they be baptized in our baptism. So he says they're baptized. In other words, the form is kept by the heretics. That's not important, though, he says. Because their whole way of life, their whole thinking about Christ is so bad that they we must not, we should not economize. And for pastoral reasons, when it's, when it's not economized, it's not good to economize in this case, right? So even though they do the form, he still says baptize them. This is something people overlook. We can do that, right? That's not a problem. St. Basil did it. We can do it too. So the church today could theoretically turn around right now across the world and say every single person, monophysite, 
you need baptized and there would be no problem whatsoever because there's only one mystery. It's only a question of form. It's only a question of the externals. The church isn't bound by the opinions or the externals of the of the various heretics. And St. Basil says we're free to do whatever we like, whatever we think is best for the salvation of the person that's coming to us. And then he goes on in bold here. And let them not say we have been baptized in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit when they suppose, as they do in a manner of rivaling Marcion and the rest of the heresies, that God is the maker of things evil. So very interesting here. They use the names. Another myth of the neo-scholastics that the, unfortunately they just ignore this canon entirely. In fact, so they use the they use the names. So you know how this thing everybody says, well, you cannot. If they use the names of the Holy Trinity, you must not receive them by baptism. This is a baptism. It says one, but the one baptism. Well, St. Basil didn't apparently think that, did he? He says, use the names. Don't let, even if they say use the names, don't let that stop you. He says, if this, even if they say that the names, don't let it stop you. Baptize them. I mean, this is crazy for the nail scholastics. You got to be a, a rigorist. You must be a rigorist if you have this position. Oop, oop, we're talking about St. Basil. Oh, suddenly, suddenly St. Basil's a rigorist. I guess St. Basil, I, I don't like that term. I think it's a, it's just a, it's kind of like Kolid Vadis. I guess maybe it'll stick one of these days and we'll baptize it, but it's not a good term because that's, it's a distortion. We're not rigorous. Uh, pr- w- to keep the canons with precision is salvific. The canons are blessed. They've been given for our salvation. Nothing absolutely wrong at all with keeping the canons according to what the fathers have taught us. St. Basil says we must keep the canons, he says. We must keep the canons. And so he goes on and he ends the canon by saying, or this part of his letter, which becomes a canon, hence if this please you, then more bishops must come together and thus set forth the canon so as to afford security to him who performs rebaptism so that he who defends this practice must might be considered trustworthy when responding on such matters. So he says, it's not enough just to do what I'm telling you and ignore the economy of Rome, ignore the ideas of the heretics, ignore that they've got the names, ignore that they have the water, three times immersion, ignore it all. It's not enough, though, that you do this. Call a council. Get support so that we don't have to have any doubt any longer that this is the path forward. That's another teaching for all of us, brothers and sisters, when something's in doubt, what do the fathers do? Call a council, get a conciliar decree, something, unfortunately, that those on the far right have not done. I call it the far right. I don't like these right and left. But anyway, the people uh, that have gone off zeal, kind of northern, not according to knowledge, where's the council that they tried to call to condemn these various heretical teachings? It never happened. If, it, if they tried it, it never materialized before they went off and separated. And now we're not struggling together anymore. So right there in that canon is so much teaching. And so the question then becomes, do they, the neo-scholastics, do they reject an ecumenically, I'm sorry, an ecumenical council, an infallible ecumenical council that accepted this canon, embraced this canon, and said, this is the canon that we must all follow and, 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 and put into practice. That's what happened in Trullo. That's what happened in the Seventh Ecumenical Council, the Eighth, the Ninth Ecumenical Council. That's what the church has done. It has embraced this canon and everything that St. Basil has written on this topic, including Canon 1, as of the church of the mind of Christ. And so the question is for the Naos Classics, what do you do with that? How do you deal with that? They don't. They ignore it. And they say, oh, we're anti-Cypriots, Cyprianites, right? Okay, well, guess what? Basil was just as strict and said the same thing. And you don't pay any attention to Basil because you th- and they they claim them as their own nonsense, nonsense, not even close. 